G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, just as I said, oh, the market's pumping yesterday and we've had a reasonable sort of retracement and it's always to be expected. Things have been quite exuberant, so a retracement was not uh, unexpected. Look, how far it's going to go, I don't know. Bitcoin's gone from, you know, just under 50,000 down to 45,000. Look, it is quite possible we retrace all the way back to 40,000. And again, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. Things were, you know, it's great when you're in it and you're making all these profits. But you got to remember, if it just keeps going like that, the harder it pumps, the harder it dumps. So a bit of a retracement from here wouldn't be so bad. Again, not that long ago, we were down around the $30,000 mark. So if this retraced back to sort of 40,000, not that bad at all. And look, even if it went back to sort of 38, uh, 39,000, then that wouldn't be the end of the world. I'm kind of hoping it stays above the 40,000 and that becomes new support for a while, but we'll just have to wait and see. But I mean, look at the market cap, 1.4 trillion. We're nearly at one and a half trillion dollars. We were under a trillion like oh, a week and a half ago. BTC dominance sitting around 60%, ETH dominance under 15% now, but look at the gas prices. Altcoins are just going crazy at the moment. Everyone's you know, going mental trying to get into every altcoin that they can, and that's usually a good sign that we might be near a bit of a top. Now, I'm not saying the peak for this bull run. I don't think we're there yet. I think we've still got some time to go, but I just I think maybe now wouldn't be such a bad time to take some profits. I'm not saying take a lot, and I never give financial advice. It's always just my personal opinion. But maybe, yeah, if you've got some coins that are up a lot, right now wouldn't be such a bad idea to take some profits. Again, maybe take all your profits. It's really up to you. You need to make your own decision. But I definitely will be looking at maybe taking some profits. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe not as well. Uh, I'm, you know... Going from 38,000 to nearly 50,000, retracing back to sort of 45,000, not so bad. And I can handle if we go back to sort of, you know, around 40,000 and then just kind of hover there for a while. That'll be great for altcoins. It'll really help Ethereum get to the next level. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But let's have a look. What has been the big movers in the last 24 hours? What's really pumped? Matic Network. Now I do have some interesting information on Matic Network. They are actually rebranding and I believe they're going to be pulled, I think, Polygon now. So we'll have a look at that very shortly. But geez, they have been absolutely pumping. And it's not just a name change either. There's a reason for the pump. Uh, and I'm glad that I held my Matic position. I mean, I've still had other coins that performed a lot better. But, you know, again, I still think it's early Formatic and they have a lot more upside. Pancake swap, so the Binance chain coin are uh, doing extremely well. Binance coin itself is doing extremely well. File coin, I'm glad that I held my file coin as well, even though it went down for a while. Synthetics network, again, you know, just continues to do better and better and has had a really good pump. So there's definitely coins that have pumped a lot. And again, these kind of moves are not always should you take profits but it's it's not a bad idea you can't lose money by taking profits sure you could miss some unrealized gains in the future but what happens if the whole market does turn tomorrow and this was the peak and then all of a sudden you lose all those profits so again never financial advice I'm, I'd, I'd never tell you what to do you just need to make your own mind up i'm considering taking some profits i haven't done it yet i've taken profits uh a while ago not too much, a very small amount. And again, I'm just thinking about doing that right now as well, but very small amounts. So I'm not ready to basically cash out. I'm still confident that the run has a lot more to go till at least sort of, you know, September, if not maybe March next year. But nothing is always the same. It will rhyme and be very similar, but not always the same. So we'll just have to wait and see. But what about losses though in the top 100? We have had a couple. So Dogecoin, of course, it's going to have a bit of a pullback. That doesn't mean it's done and won't go up any higher. Uh, BitTorrent, again, it went up you know, nearly 200% over seven days. So that's to be expected. Alpha Finance. But look, other than Dogecoin and 13% you know, retracement from a near 200% pump, not so bad. And then everything else is just low single digits. But that is what makes me a little bit nervous that maybe we might be seeing a 
you know, a bit of a top for now, not the top, top of the cycle. I think we have a lot more to go, but maybe just a little bit of a top uh, for now. And again, maybe a retracement. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, let's have a look at the chart though. Look what Bitcoin has done. Oh, see what a move. Now, another way to look at it is say that look, we had a fairly brutal 30% retracement that went for, well, really, I guess it stopped there. So let's say there. A 30% retracement that lasted two weeks. So that's reasonable. So shouldn't we just pump and continue to pump? Well, we only got to 42,000, so we've gone well over that. We jumped up, you know, $7,000 from there. So it wouldn't be unexpected that maybe, again, we come down, come back down and sort of retest around this area, around the $40,000 range. Again, it's not impossible that we don't come down and bounce off this line here. Not saying that's what's going to happen, it's just a possibility and something we need to keep in our minds. And really, it's when we sort of scale out and then, you know, we can have a look at where we've come from. So from back here in March last year, so that's about a year ago, I mean, that's one hell of a move. Let's see what we've done. So we have gone from here. So in a year, we've gone up 1100%. That's pretty good. That's not too bad at all. So now we just need to ask ourselves is how much more do we have? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, we can go back to this one. Hopefully it'll load soon. And where was the low? So the low was here. So what about this last one? 2015, that was their low. So that was 12,000%. So that did a 12,000% rise in the last bull run. And so far, we're only at 1,000. So do you think it would be safe to say that maybe we only do roughly half of it? So shouldn't we have somewhere around about a 6,000% rise? Well, who knows? I guess that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And how different are things this time? Because things are different this time, but they're also still sort of the same. This is still cryptocurrencies. It's still always played out in these similar kind of cycles. It's just the returns have been getting a little bit less. So again, that was 12,000% that that did, and it did it over longer than a year. And this one, we are currently at just over a thousand percent so one thousand one hundred compared to twelve thousand let's actually put this in and let's see where we would get to let's see if i've got the chart open big enough nine thousand seven thousand all right, that takes us, so if we only got half the returns that we did from that sort of last cycle low to last cycle high, that takes us to about $258,000. So I do think we have a lot more upside to come, but what we need to go back and remember is that when we look at this pump, I mean, look at this kind of retracement right here. This one was brutal. I mean, you've gone from here down to here, that was a 42% retracement. What about from here down to here? 41% retracement. Here down to here, 36% retracement. So what we need to look at is that there were a number of 30 plus percent retracements. So would it be impossible for us to have a 30% retracement from here? No, I don't think it would be impossible. I don't think it's likely, but I do think it's quite possible that maybe we come back down and sort of test around about here. We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, that's it for the charts. We'll just have to keep keep our eyes out and see you know, what happens over the next few days. You know, we are only midweek at the moment. 
Wednesday here in Australia, so you know different time frames for different parts around the world. There's generally a weekend retracement, and I've spoke about that before. So are we going to get an early sort of weekend retracement, or are we just going to keep pumping real hard through to maybe sort of Friday, Saturday, Sunday? We'll have to wait and find out. All right, for all you Litecoin holders who are like me and been holding on and thinking, you know, are institutions going to make a big play in Litecoin because there's so many more coins out there and Litecoin is still so undervalued? I think that is going to happen. And this, this makes me more confident in my thought process when I was thinking that. All right, so record 584 million Litecoin futures, open interest, signals institutional inflow. Open interest on Litecoin's futures hit a record 584 million, a signal that institutional investors like Bitwise and, Bitwise and Grayscale's investments are interested in the altcoin. Litecoin might be 60% below its December 2017 all-time high at $420, but that hasn't stopped its futures contracts open interest from reaching a record 584 million. This makes Litecoin the seventh largest cryptocurrency by market cap capitalization and it ranks third in derivatives behind Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I said quite a long time ago that I thought institutions would really get into Litecoin. They're going to get into Bitcoin, everyone's gonna get into Bitcoin, but they will start to look for other opportunities. What is like Bitcoin? What's been kind of you know declared not a security and things like that? Litecoin. So Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and I think Bitcoin Cash, they've basically been declared non-securities. So why wouldn't they get into Litecoin at such cheap prices and there's so many more that they can go out there and buy? There's not the big competition at the moment. So this makes me super bullish for Litecoin. I'm not actively buying any more Litecoin at the moment. I did buy myself a reasonable size sort of stake uh, very early on, I think I picked it up for, I got a couple for 40 US dollars, and then I think I got a couple more for sort of 60 US dollars, something like that. I can't remember the exact price. Um, Litecoin hasn't performed as well as a number of my other coins. It's performed better than, better than others though, but this is what I thought would be coming, and this just makes me super bullish for Litecoin. I think there's much more upside, and particularly for the long term. I don't think Litecoin uh, is going to disappear. Joining up with Cardano and all sorts of other good news happening. And again, declared not a security. All right, DeFi Pulse. Seems there's a bit of argy-bargy going on. So DeFi, DeFi Pulse, the website, they have banned one inch from being on its platform, basically listing exactly where it is. It seems there's, seems there's been some beef going on. And interesting here, so this is a tweet from One Inch Exchange. Hey, DeFi Pulse, this is our official second request to list One Inch Liquidity Protocol on your service. Excuse me. DeFi is about freedom, and you shouldn't ignore our project with more than two billion total value locked just because your founder is building a competitor to our aggregator. Look. If that's the case, if that is why they haven't put them on there, then that's, yeah, poor form. Poor form to say the very least. If you have a service that's out there, a website that claims to, you know, list everything, but you don't want to put them in there because you're building a competitor to it, well, then it's not really a very accurate site. But in DeFi Pulse's uh, re rebuttal to it, they have said that they have been pressured and threatened with violence and all sorts of things by members from One Inch Exchange. So, a bit of argy bargy there as things are sort of heating up. Hopefully, they get it sorted. And look, if DeFi Pulse really is legit, then they should just list basically everything that's out there. It should be a fair site to go to that tells you exactly where things are and they don't sort of disguise other projects that'll be similar to ones they're building. So they can you know punt their own sort of stuff but anyway it is what it is all right tesla gone out and bought a whole stack of bitcoin is you know what's the next big company is what they want to know so larry olson's oracle could be next in line to buy bitcoin says max kaiser 
After Tesla's purchase of 1.5 billion in Bitcoin, speculations emerged in the other, in the cryptocurrency field. Who would be the next giant name to enter the Bitcoin ecosystem? According to Max Kaiser, the host of the Kaiser Report, it would be U.S. multinational IT behemoth founded by Larry Larry Ellison, Oracle Corporation. So again, I do think that there's going to be more big companies that are coming in and getting to Bitcoin. Some big companies are going to hold off trying to get a better a better entry point, thinking that there's going to be a big dump. And look, at some stage, there probably will be a big retracement. But will that big retracement be lower than where we currently are? I'm not sure. You know, with, with all the exuberance that's going on and there's more and more people getting into Bitcoin, Visa's going to open it up to the world. PayPal's going to open it up to the world. You know, all these big businesses buying. I just, I don't know. I, you know, any company that's not getting into it at the moment and expects to buy at a cheaper price, for their sake, I can only hope they're right. I'm not sure they will be, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, this is the one I was talking about. So, Matic Network is to become Polygon and focus on Ethereum scaling. So, I'll read most of this article. It was quite interesting. The popular Layer 2 scaling solution for Ethereum blockchain, Matic Network, has rebranded its project to Polygon. Upon the name change, Polygon also announced plans to enhance its support for the Ethereum network to scale faster and reduce growing transaction costs. Known as Matic Network until today, the project serves as an open source scaling solution for the Ethereum network, backed by two of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, Binance and Coinbase. In a press release shared with Crypto Potato, the team announced the rebranding, which will convert the name to Polygon. The name change will coincide with a strategic shift that will see Polygon focus on creating a multi-chain system akin to Polkadot on Ethereum. This is what's interesting. Apart from the ongoing L2 secured chains and standalone chains, the multi-chain architecture plans to adopt various new solutions. Those include optimistic roll-ups recently unveiled by Cartesi, ZK roll-ups and Validium. Polygon's modular SDK will implement all solutions to work together. It will enable different projects to select the scaling option that suits their best needs their needs best instead of being bound by only one option these developments will essentially make polygon a layer 2 aggregator some of ethereum's team and developers such as ryan adams anthony sasano hudson jameson and john lillick will join polygon as advisors to ensure the creation of a larger front against polka dot so this is what they were worried about and look in all fairness it's not just polka dot it's also cardano and all the other change all the other chains that are coming through and are so much cheaper. Ethereum needs to get onto this stuff ASAP and the full layer uh, ETH 2.0 just won't happen fast enough by the sounds of it. So well done to Matic uh, and all the people who held Matic. I bought it and watched it retrace about, you know, between 20 to 40%. It was fluctuating and I was contemplating selling it another a number of times and i was like no i really believe in this project i love what they're doing and now the fact that they are adapting even more because they were just focusing on i think optimistic roll-ups if i'm correct but now they're moving into all these others as well it will make them a much more dynamic and usable platform and they could become you know one of the major layer two solutions so super bullish news and I can't wait to see yeah, what happens with this project. Very, very interesting. Because at the moment it goes on to say down here that you know transaction costs were nearly $25 for a, that was just for a basic uh, gas fee. There were ones that were a whole lot higher and particularly in some of these DeFi platforms. So Keep a lookout for Matic Network. All right, Federal Reserve Bank of Louisiana is keeping a close eye on Ethereum-based decentralized finance. A February 5 report titled Defi Decentralized Finance on Blockchain and Smart Contract-Based Financial Markets comes with warnings about smart contract security, scalability, and other risk factors, but is otherwise bullish about the innovation. DeFi offers exciting opportunities and has the potential to create a truly open, transparent and immutable financial infrastructure, wrote Fabian Sahar. I don't know how to say that. I've butchered, I'm sure. A university of Basel professor who specialises in distributed ledger technologies such as blockchain. 
This is the start, ladies and gentlemen. They will all move to DeFi. Now, not every DeFi project is going to last, but there will be numerous ones out there. It's not like there's going to be one DeFi project, like it's only Aave that can do it. Curve Finance, and there's a whole lot of other things going on out there that will continue to grow. Speaking of Curve Finance, Curve Finance's AMM is making its way to another blockchain. So it was just Ethereum, now it's moving to Polkadot. Hence why uh, Matic and all the rest of it are starting to move because a lot of places are moving to Polkadot. It's, and not only Polkadot, but also uh, Cardano as it has its new smart contracts out now. So this is one of the reasons why it's happening. Money Market Equilibrium is building a cross-chain implementation of Curve Finance on its Polkadot parachain. Once finished, the automated money marker, m money maker, mar automated market maker, sorry, excuse me, will exist on both Ethereum and Polkadot. Curve Finance is one of the largest automated market makers on Ethereum. The protocol en enables low slippage swaps of stable, sw God, tongue tied, enables low slippage swaps of stable coins such as Tether, DAI, USDC. Curve processes 400 million in volume in one day last month. That's a lot of money going through Curve Finance, but very small in the grand scheme of things. But again, that is why DeFi is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's why I've made positions in DeFi and the ones I really like that I think will be around for the long term. Now, so there's some really good news here. According to Moneybox, Money Today, sorry, DBX received the operating license to establish a subsidiary in China as part of its overseas expansion plans. The crypto exchange is affiliated with the Korean Blockchain Coordination Association. So China is now allowing legalized exchanges and things like that. Per the details given by the exchange, the Chinese government first greenlighted the opening of the branch on December the 28th, 2020 by issuing a temporary permission. However, the officials have granted the final uh, incorporation's certification on February 5th, 2021. So it seems like China, that they will do things to slow down cryptocurrencies in certain areas, but I think overall they are actually cryptocurrency bullish and they will look to capitalize on it. And again, they've now allowed a branch into there, so an exchange that can legally operate within China. So very, very interesting. Uh, and again, this is bullish for cryptocurrency adoption. But I don't just want to give you all the bullish news because there is some sort of bearish news. And this is really sad. I did speak about this a little while ago. So India is getting closer to national crypto clampdown. Now we need to be careful with this story because we don't know exactly how they're going to clamp down at the moment. But some of the news coming out is quite worrying. I really do think cryptocurrencies is a way for a lot of people in India to get their way out of poverty. Now they still need to understand markets and when it's good to get in and when it's bad, good to get out and all the rest of it. But overall, I think the good cryptocurrencies anyway would be a great way for impoverished people to get out of, well, being impoverished really. Yeah, how else would you say it? To be poor, but we'll have a look down here. So India is one step closer to clamping down on crypto. The country's junior finance minister, I'm going to butcher this name as well, Anurag Thakur, said yesterday that there should be more regulation of Bitcoin and other digital assets and that, will, and that a bill was being finalised. Thakur was, refer, was referring to India's plan to control digital assets. This includes a framework on central bank digital currencies, but also a ban on the use of private cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. The bill, however, does not yet go into further detail and it isn't clear how exactly Indian citizens will be restricted in their use of such assets. So this will be really sad if they actually ban things like, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum. What? Just tax it. There's going to be plenty of money to be made in taxes and all the rest of it. And if you build infrastructure around it, then you won't have to worry about all the bad plays and all the rest of it. But to try and ban it, this really is disappointing. And again, particularly for people in somewhat impoverished nations. I mean, India is not poor by any stretch of the imagination, but it has a very large population. And there is a number of that population that are impoverished. impoverished. 
and cryptocurrencies I really do believe would be a way for them to get out of that now not all of them but at least some of them and by cracking down on that I think that's really disappointing but what can you do all right I'd love to know down below your thoughts are you I mean the price of Matic Network as we already saw is quite bullish but are you even more excited by Matic Network becoming Polygon and then starting to focus on all of these things as opposed to just one? So they really were focusing on optimistic roll-ups initially, I believe, but now they're also looking at ZK roll-ups and Validium and looking at slowing down the progress of you know chains like Polkadot, Cardano and things like that. And look, I've got positions in all of them. I like them all and I think they all can succeed. But if Ethereum wants to say, wants to stay number one and be the, you know, the, the, the biggest one of them all, they need to get layer two sorted out oh so quick. And they need Matic, you know, X die stake and other platforms like that to quickly come through and sort of save them. Because at the moment, a lot of things are moving across to, again, things like Cardano, cheaper fees, things like polka dot cheaper fees and look maybe even tezos and you know eos and other things in the future we'll just have to wait and see although i'm not sure how eos is going to do as dan larimer left it all right so again love to know your thoughts down below are you bullish about matic moving on to become polygon all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on that game train and i'll see you next time